What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. If you clicked on this thumbnail, it's because you are currently looking at the Oberon levers. You bought yourself a pair of Oberon levers and you're looking for some install tips or you're thinking about buying yourself some Oberon levers or maybe you're just in the market for some new badass levers for your Harley. Well, if any of that rings true, you're in the right spot. So check it out. You're not going to want to miss this one. Let's get started. All right, so a little bit of backstory real quick. When we first purchased the Oberon adjustable levers for Lilith, you know how this bike, we're doing the gold accents on a lot of the components on the bike. Well, um, so I ordered these from a stateside company. I'm not going to name their names because uh, they were just terrible with their customer service. Ordered these back in November. It is now February. Um, so after months, like two and a half months of no response from this company, they were just, you know, dicking me around, um, completely ducking and dodging any emails that I would send to them trying to get kind of an update on when these would be sent out. I understand these are handmade, hand anodized in-house with Oberon in the United Kingdom. Totally understand that. Thing is, is they told me it would take four to six weeks, which I was totally fine with. But on the two month mark, I'm like, okay, something's going on. So I reached out to Oberon. They said, hey, we sent those levers back over a month ago to the company you purchased them from. So reach out to them and see what's going on. Well, again, to no avail, no response from said company. So without busting this company out, I would just suggest if you're going to go with the Oberons, hit up tuckerspeed.com and get them through Tucker Speed because they're gonna be more reliable for you uh, to get your levers out to. But big shout out to Oberon, uh, especially Dave uh, over there at Oberon for working with me and getting these made on Monday and then sent out Tuesday and they were here in under 24 hours in Utah from the UK. So these were made Monday, so two days ago, Shipped out yesterday morning and here on my porch by noon. That is awesome customer service. And it's too bad the third party that was doing sales for these guys can't do something similar for their customers. But shout out to Dave. You're a rock star, sir. I appreciate you. Um, so now we can finally get these installed after uh, almost three months of waiting. I'm going to show you exactly how to install these levers. It's pretty straightforward. Not a lot of work goes into it. So let's uh, get out to the bike, get the new ones put on. As you can see, I went with what is called the custom blade. It's a little bit wider than stock, but they offer this in standard, custom, which is this one, and then arrow. And I, I just went with the custom blade because it is a little bit um, thicker and wider in some spots. And then the anodized red, which looks real slick on there. I think that'll complement the rest of the bike really well. Um, if you guys don't know how these Oberons work, for people like me with severe rheumatoid arthritis in my hands, my hands kind of uh, suck for most of the time. Um, so these help to where you can adjust your levers to where the pull is a shorter distance from your handlebars. It's a lot less travel time or travel space, I should say, uh, in your in your clutch pull or your brake pull. It's not the brake pull I'm really worried about. It's just my clutch pull. Let's get these on. We will see you out at the bike. All right, guys. So first things first, we got to get our mirror out of the way which will get our hand guards out of the way, and then we can remove our stock OEM levers. So you're gonna wanna retain any pins 
that come out. And then the best way of getting the little clip off the bottom here that holds this pin in is to get yourself a little set of pliers, just retention pliers to get that little clip off. So this bottom bolt that's holding uh, our mirror on is a 13 millimeter. Again, make sure you're not losing any of your hardware. So set those in a spot where they won't get lost. Hold your hand guard, lift your mirror out, get those up and out of the way. That way we have full non-obstructed access to our pin. Take our pliers. Just get yourself a nice little set of uh, snap ring pliers. Get it up in there, hook on, squeeze, and that'll open that up to where you can get it uh, up and out of the way. And then this pin will just pop up. Now, if you have a hydraulic clutch like I do, you're gonna wanna be super careful that we don't mess up the pin in here or the sensor or it's going to suck for you um, when it comes time to starting your bike. So we're just going to want to make sure with the, the new one when we put it in that it's set in there right, nothing's jammed up, um, it's seated properly. But first, I'm gonna get this cleaned out. It looks pretty grimy in there. I'm gonna get it cleaned out and put some uh, waterproof grease in there. Because as you can see, it's pretty grimy. And then you can see that switch in there that I was talking about. You don't wanna make sure that that's seated correctly. All right, so I'm just gonna take a paper towel and just gently kind of clean out this area. All right, so get you just a little dab of our grease. Just put a little bit on where those surfaces are gonna be in contact with friction. Just kind of be careful that when you seat this in, make sure there's no obstructions in there. Make sure it just goes in nice and smooth. Boom, just make sure it's free moving. And before we get too carried away, I'm gonna make sure that that sensor in there, that plunger, isn't being compressed and it's not going to affect the startup of the bike. Squeeze this in, put it in first gear, pull this in. down radio you be quiet before you get me in trouble with YouTube we'll take our snap ring plier that still has our snap ring on there and we will just put this back under the bottom and once we get the other side put on, the brake side. I'll show you exactly how these dials work. So while I have these available, I wanna show you just the difference between stock, the size difference, and how these match up. So if you're wondering how the custom blade 
size differences compared to stock. They're pretty similar. These are just better made um, all around. These are handmade in the UK and it shows the quality is uh, quite remarkable, honestly. These are very, very well made. And then you got your laser etching in there. I don't know if you can see that. Oberon, made in England. Just same as the other side. Get our mirror and hand guard off. Okay, just like that. So now that we got the crush washer off, we're gonna have to just loosen up our switch housing. Boop, there. Um, and then that's just gonna have to come out of the way so we can get our brake lever off. But yeah, just our perch uh, mount clamp there. switch housing or I should say the back off and leave that there it's clamped on so this is why we popped our snap ring off first is because that would be a real pain trying to do that right now so we're gonna pop our pin lift that up out of the way put it somewhere safe and then we can remove our stock lever. I'm gonna grab my rag and just kind of wipe this out. Get all that crap out of there like we did before on the other side. Now, I'm just going to let this rest right there. Don't have a spazzy. Don't spazz out. It's not. I promise it's not hurting nothing. All right. So while that's just chilling, we're gonna get our other lever ready. All right, so we'll just take a little bit, a little bit there, a little bit in this little indentation where our plunger goes. And this is just creating less friction on those uh, mating spots. So as you can see, we've got it all. A little bit of grease on there. Doesn't need to be overdone. Right? Just take a little bit of grease and just rub it inside of our Housing here, maybe just a little bit on that plunger. Just kind of put some wherever you feel is necessary. So we're just gonna grab our assembly here, slide that into place, pop our pin, boom, there we go. Now, make sure our plunger that's right here is seated in the recess in the lever. Next up, put it all back together. Okay. And we'll just hop on, make any adjustments needed so yeah like that's why you do that is so you can kind of see how that's gonna feel because it did move Just 
Try that on for size. Okay, yeah, that feels good right there. All right, now we can get it all tightened up, buttoned up. Boom. So minus putting the, um, the mirrors back on and our hand guards, that is the install, guys. Now, to fine tune how you want it, how you want your levers to feel and the travel distance, it's, they make it super easy. There's eight adjustments total. So one, you can see the little notch in there, it says one. So one is gonna be closest travel to the bars. And that's pretty close. I don't know if I want it that close. They, they ship it to you on four. Um, I'm thinking three feels the best for me. But it's really personal preference and just kind of deciding how you want yours set up to your liking. That's it, guys. That is, that's the install. And these things are beautiful looking. They look sharp. They look really good with all the other gold accents, if I do say so myself. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Do these Oberons speak to you? Something that you would put on your bike? Do you have crippled little hands from arthritis like I do? Let me know in the comments. As always, guys, I sure do appreciate you. Thanks for coming back. Hopefully, you can figure out which levers are going to suit you the best. I, just from what I've seen and what you guys have seen, this is the first time I've checked these out as we install them together. But just from seeing their quality firsthand, um, yeah, it's uh, they're they're made very very well, and they're worth the price. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we will catch you on the next one. Peace out. Enjoy this sweet outro. Bye.